Hi, Elliot Recaps here. Today I'm going to explain a movie in which students must decapitate a big snake to take antidote to survive. The movie is called Megaboa. The film begins with two hunters, who arrived on the island by ship, then they go to the jungle. Men armed with a crossbow find their first prey and hunt a wild boar. At some point, the animal starts to run away and they try to chase it. Moments later, Joaquin hears a noise coming from a snake nearby and asks Rex to stop. Raising their heads up, the men notice a 50-foot boa constrictor and realize that by selling its skin, they can get rich. The naive Rex decides to shoot the snake with a crossbow, but he notices him earlier and attacks. The boa wraps itself around the hunter in a matter of seconds, trying to strangle him. Rex asks for help from a friend, but Joaquin realizes that he can no longer be saved. The man runs into the forest and uses a machete to cut his way through the jungle. Finding a safe place, he hides and sees how a huge boa crawls a few meters away from him. A little later, Joaquin goes ashore and realizes that the serpent has destroyed his boat and it will not work to leave the island. A little later, a helicopter arrives on the same island on which an anthropology professor, Dr. Malin, and a group of students flew in. They have 36 hours to set up camp and spend the night, after which the scientist and his wards must move deep into the jungle to find and photograph petroglyphs. Jason and Adam go to the jungle in search of branches for a fire. Along the way, the guys discuss the destroyed ship, which they singled out on the shore, and understand that they are not alone on this island. Meanwhile, Benji, Grace, and Allison help the professor set up camp and set up a tent. Allison recently served in the army and took survival courses, so she does an excellent job with her tasks. In the evening, the students and Professor Mallon once again discuss plans for tomorrow. Benji is setting up a quadcopter with which they must map the island. At some point, a group of students hear a noise coming from the bushes. Allison grabs a gun and threatens the unknown with them, so that he does not hide and does not plot anything evil. The man hiding in the bushes turned out to be the surviving hunter, Joaquin. He is afraid to tell the whole truth about the 50-foot boa constrictor, so he says that his friend lost his life due to a snake bite. Joaquin is afraid to stay on the island and ready to pay any money. If only the students and the professor would take him with them. Malin asks the hunter not to worry and promises that he will take him with him to the helicopter, which will arrive in a little more than a day. The professor also invites Joaquin to stay in their camp, even though there is no tent for him. The man politely refuses and talks about his ship, after which he goes to spend the night on the beach, since his equipment was left there. As soon as Joaquin leaves, the students discuss him and think that the man's behavior is strange, but still, he needs help. Early in the morning, the professor wakes up first and sits on a chair nearby. Malin does not notice that a spider has climbed into his shoe and is trying to put on shoes, but at the same moment the insect bites him. Students run to the professor's cry and understand from the wound that the insect was poisonous. There are no antihistamines in the first aid kit, so the only medicine that the students have at their disposal is Jason's whiskey. Soon, Joaquin returns to the camp with equipment and a crossbow and gets to know that the group will leave the island earlier than planned. Having learned about what kind of insect it was, the hunter reports that it is a hornet spider, and without treatment the man has no more than 36 hours, otherwise he will fall asleep forever. Frightened, Malone calls the helicopter company and asks for emergency help. Rita refuses and says that the helicopter will not arrive earlier than in a day, as there is a storm and strong wind on the shore which is why the pilots cannot fly. Joaquin realizes that the professor is leaving this world and informs the group that there is a unique orchid four hours from the camp that can be used to extract antihistamines and prolong Malone's life. The students decide to move out immediately to stay until dark and leave Benji with Professor, who is able to look after him. Soon a group of students under the command of Joaquin goes deep into the jungle to find a cure for the professor. Along the way, Jason gets sick, as the guy gets tired quickly and constantly falls behind the rest of the group. Grace is shocked by Allison's calmness, because the girl was at war and saw how people lose their lives. 
She and the hunter are sure that it is not hard to see how people fall asleep forever. It is much more difficult to lose loved ones. Meanwhile, Benji programs the drone for mapping surveys and promises the professor that he will return in two hours with full information about the island. A few hours later, the students come to an orchid tree and see that its branches are full of snakes. The girls are scared and screaming in horror, but Joaquin asks not to make them even more angry. Adam is not afraid of snakes and decides to climb a tree to pick a saving flower, but does not have time to do so. The students see the 50-foot boa king and, frightened, run away. A couple of minutes later, the group stops and notices that Jason is missing. Meanwhile, a guy lagging behind his friends calls for help and again sees a boa constrictor. He tries to run away, but the snake is faster and, attacking Jason, strangles him. The students realize that screaming is dangerous and decide to look for Jason. The only way to find it is to get back to the orchid tree, but it takes a carefully thought-out plan. Among their weapons, they have a three-shot flare pistol and a tranquilizer arrow. Grace is very scared and doesn't want to go back to the tree with the snakes, but the others make a collective decision to find and save Jason and pick a flower that can prolong the professor's life. Meanwhile, Benji finds sticks and makes a crutch out of them so that the professor can move around the camp on his own. She then calls Rita in the hope that something has changed and asks for a rescue team to be sent. The weather is still bad and the boat is broken, so there is no hope that someone will arrive in the next 24 hours. Rita understands that people need to be saved and is looking for a pilot who can fly to the island for any money. All acquaintances refuse, and the only one who is ready to help is Jake, who knows how dangerous this island is. Sometime later, the group gets back to the orchid tree. Grace continues to panic, but the others convince her that they can fend off the attack of the boa constrictor and put him to sleep if necessary. The group understands that the snakes in the tree are the juvenile offspring of a 50-foot boa constrictor, so they must act quickly and carefully. Following a prearranged plan, Joaquin and Allison surround the tree while Adam tries to climb it to pick the flower. At some point, the snake notices an intruder, and Allison distracts her with a rocket launcher. Joaquin neutralizes the boa constrictor with a tranquilizer, and the students watch Jason's lifeless body fall out of it. Hiding in a safe place, the students discuss what happened and promise not to tell anyone about exactly how Jason lost his life. Joaquin again offers to return to destroy the snake with dynamite, as well as get the coveted flower. During the quarrel, the students realize that the hunter knew about the boa constrictor and used them as bait. Grace, Allison, and Adam want to return to the camp, but they cannot do it without a guide, as the island is full of traps that could take their lives. Joaquin continues to insist that the monster must be eliminated in order to avenge Jason and Rex. The students are not soldiers and are too afraid, so they categorically refuse to return to the orchid tree. Despite fear of falling into a trap, Adam, Allison, and Grace make their way back in the hope that they can get to the camp. Joaquin is sure that in an hour they will give up and come back, so he decides to wait for the students at the nearest tree. Meanwhile, Benji waits for a drone that has returned from a two-hour flight to load the map onto his laptop and check the image quality. Looking at the photographs, the girl and the professor notice a huge boa constrictor several tens of meters long and understand that this island is very dangerous. Not so long ago, they saw a flare and thought it was a prank of students or an accidental shot, but now they understand that they are really threatened by huge snakes. The three students are trying to get back to the camp and, guided by the compass, are heading south. Along the way, Allison, Adam, and Grace discuss Joaquin, realizing that his behavior was strange. The hunter very suspiciously found their camp at night. No less strange is that he was not at all afraid of the snake, speaks several languages, and is well-trained. Allison is surprised by Joaquin's calmness and his warning that there are even more dangerous creatures on the island than a fifty-foot boa constrictor. Soon, a group of students stumble upon a nest of snakes and don't know if they should move on. Adam and Allison think it's better to go in the opposite direction and return to Joaquin, but Grace persuades them to continue moving, as she wants to return to Professor Malone. A few minutes later, the students see relatively small snakes curling up on tree branches. There are a lot of traps and other dangers ahead, so it is not safe to continue to the camp. 
Seeing that the snakes are preparing to attack, soon they meet with Joaquin, who is quietly waiting for them near the tree, and decide to return for the orchid. Now the students agree to the hunter's plan and hide so that he planted dynamite and blew up the tree with the sleeping snake. As soon as the explosion occurs, a huge boa constrictor wakes up and slides down from the falling tree. The students cannot see where he has gone, so they decide to pick an orchid flower and run as soon as possible. Adam has a leg injury, so Allison wants to do it instead of him. As soon as the girl plucks the flower, the boa constrictor attacks her. Adam tries to divert the attention of a huge predator to himself and immediately becomes easy prey. Joaquin, Allison, and Grace try to escape, but the snake smells them and chases the surviving humans. Along the way, they notice a narrow cave and decide to hide in it. Allison notices a tree with cobwebs and assumes that there are dangerous insects, but the boa constrictor is close and there is no choice. The professor and Benji understand that they need to come to the rescue, but do not know where to go. There is only one building on the island, the former scientific laboratory, and Malin suggests that they need to move towards it. Meanwhile, Joaquin and the girls find themselves in a walls are decorated with petroglyphs. Grace understands that pictures form a message and reads it. At some point, the girl decides to take a photo, and the flash attracts spiders. Joaquin easily crushes small insects and persuades Allison not to run anywhere because it is safe enough here. The spiders retreat, and the group believes they got scared. In fact, the insects retreated to let the king of arachnids, a huge spider, ready to punish people for their impudence. The trinity hurriedly escapes from the cave and sees that the giants, the boa constrictor, and the spider have met. While the serpent is destroying the arachnid, they use this to escape and hide in a lab nearby. Next to her, the girls and the hunter see a cable car stretched over dangerous acid, after which they hide in an old building. On the way to the lab, Benji and the professor discover Adam's shoe, but hope the guy is okay. In the lab, Allison finds a machete, an axe, and a gas canister. A group of survivors get attacked by small snakes and Grace tries to chop them apart. The snakes keep moving and Allison tries to set them on fire, causing the lab to catch fire. Joaquin decides to distract the boa constrictor and asks the girls to run to the cable car. A little later, he joins them, but the snake grabs the hunter and falls into the acid with him, as a result of which both lose their lives. Benji and Malone got to the lab, where they meet Allison and Grace. It seems that everything's fine, but the boa survived, having shed its skin, attacks the professor. Grace and Allison remember the cave paintings and realize that only now the boa has become vulnerable. Attacking him, they injure the 50-foot monster, after which the boa constrictor swallows Grace. The girl not only survived, but also took the snake's life by hitting him with a machete in the head. Cutting the boa constrictor, Grace got out of it. Using an orchid, the students save the professor. Jake soon flies after them, and the survivors get back home. They are unaware that the body of the boa constrictor was swallowed by an even larger snake, which was also on the island. We hope you guys enjoyed watching. We look forward to see your likes and subscription. Thanks for helping to grow the channel. Write any thoughts about snakes. What do you think about them? See you soon.